Today I am going to talk to landlords and investors about how to get rid of a bad Section 8 tenant. And I am not going to be very popular today. Be ready to be mad at me. Be ready to comment below because nobody's going to like what I have to say. Tenants, if you're watching, I'm sorry, it's just true. Landlords, if you're watching, it's true. And Section 8 offices, I know you guys watch this stuff. You have one bit of advice and I'm kind of going to say the opposite and you're not going to like me anymore. So if you're ready to hear the truth about what we need to do to get a Section 8 tenant out of our houses, then you're going to want to watch this one. So let's key up the intro so that you know who I am and let's get started. coming to you today from Detroit, Michigan. That is the Detroit Renaissance Center right there behind me. And then that is the Detroit River, which is fresh water. And right behind me there, that is Canada, you guys. We have a foreign country right across the river from us that isn't pointing guns at us. We don't have any big border problems. That fresh water there means that I get to take long showers. It's not that big of a deal in Michigan. And the Detroit water is so clean that we drink it right out of the tap. It's some of the best water in the country. And that body of water happens to be part of the St. Lawrence Seaway. So we're a major player in the world. I highly recommend, of course I recommend, that you invest in Detroit real estate. But in this video, I'm going to give you some of my own experience about investing in Detroit and my own rental properties and those that I manage for other people. And I'm gonna tell you about what it takes to get rid of a Section 8 tenant in your property. Now, first of all, I wanna say though, that do you really want to get rid of the tenant? Now we've had one that was just dirty. I took my own advice that I put out in this video here, which talks about going to do a home visit when you do the background check on somebody with Section 8. Now she was a little bit dirty and I thought I'm just being critical of the housekeeping, but once she moved in, it got to be a little more than just that. She did cause some damages, but we did pick up on it right away and it we had to make a decision like okay we're getting a thousand bucks a month from section 8 that is awesome do we really want to get rid of her because the damage is already done and it's not terrible terrible damage so we ended up keeping her she stayed for eight years yeah we did pay more on the clean out but we also rehabbed the kitchen so eh, you got to kind of weigh all those decisions because it is pretty darn sweet to get rent every month from section 8. If you don't really know how Section 8 works, start with my video, Section 8 for Dummies, and then you're gonna wanna go into this video, which is talks about more like the breakdown between HUD and um, how the money kind of works its way to you and like who you'd even be making the complaint to if you did. So I hate to be the person that's like, hey, you know, here's what you should have done. Hindsight is 2020 because you're probably watching this video because you already have someone you wanna get rid of but you need to know not to do whatever you did again and what can you do to help protect yourself. Uh, when I get calls for people that want to rent one of my houses and they have Section 8, there's a whole process I go through on the phone before I even show them a house to make sure it's a good fit for both of us. Check out that one there. And then I do um, some background work on Section 8. It's not totally the same. And another thing that you really need to understand as a landlord is how the money breaks down and so I made one on how to get Section 8, which will tell you where their money is even coming from in the first place. So you need, you, I'm just saying you should really do all that, but then here's the best thing that you can do that I think is just so awesome and I've never had anybody call me from this super hot tip. When you have somebody apply to rent a house from you and if they have Section 8, you're allowed to call their Section 8 office and they are required to give you the phone number of the current landlord. Now, if somebody were to call me and I have a Section 8 tenant and I'm about to lose that tenant, the only reason I'm losing a good Section 8 tenant is if they need to move to a different area. Otherwise, it could be that I'm just kind of pushing them out and they need to move. And if you call me, I've got nothing to lose. They're not gonna know 
that you called me so you will get one heck of an honest report from me about what that tenant was actually like in my house highly recommend taking that step so i just want to say that the easiest way to get rid of a section 8 tenant always start with the path of least resistance right if you're not going to keep them the easiest way is just don't renew the lease when it comes time for their lease renewal on section 8 they have to rent for one year at a time so you're kind of stuck with them for that year unless they do something really bad and you can take it to court and you want to go that whole route which of course you can but this video isn't about that so much you wait till the end of the lease and then you send them a notice that the owner does not want to renew this property and they always want to have a reason because you don't want any retaliation, right? So I always tell them that the reason is that the owner is selling the house. So it's a good time for him to get out of doing that. So um, that's what I do. But here's another hot tip. I've got good hot tips in this video. When you send them that non-renewal, you're also going to want to send them a notice of eviction because what happens is Section 8 stops paying you the rent and there is like no motivation to get them out of your house. Section 8 already stopped paying the rent, they're looking for another house. Uh, it takes a month to get them out if you do the legal system. So I'm saying when you get to that 30 day where you know you're not renewing the lease, send them a notice of eviction and i always do a courtesy call and i say hey i do this with everyone because i've got those people that don't move and i know you're not one of those i know you would never do that where i'm not getting any money but i have to send it to protect myself and of course that you know it alerts them that shoot they're gonna go to court if they don't hurry up and find somewhere so now i'm gonna make the section 8 housing authorities kind of mad at me because this is how they think we're going to handle it and this is what they are asking us to do so whenever we have a lease violation we are supposed to always send that to section 8 as well so I have it in my lease that whatever lease violation happens I'm also sending it to section 8 I think it's worth actually telling the tenant that people don't read their leases you know well I don't want any retaliation for doing that <laughs> So I really take it into consideration whether or not I am sending that to Section 8. It can help, like if you have multiple, that's one of their things, multiple, I don't remember their words, multiple times of something bad that they do take that into consideration for them to lose their voucher. But here's the thing, let's say you do send them these lease violations and you're following the rules, you're doing this totally by the books, okay? The tenant is losing her voucher and she is going to get an appeal. There's like, not an appeal, but she has, she has a chance to appear in front of a board and they bring in somebody else that doesn't work for their Section 8 office, but works for Section 8 and knows the Section 8 rules. I said, why don't you bring in a landlord? But they don't do it like that. They need somebody that knows all the rules and that person helps them make, that, that person is the magistrate that makes the decision whether or not they stay. When there's a lot of things that go into whether or not they stay on Section 8, because let's say you just want to get them off Section 8, but beyond just wanting them out of your house, right? So you want to know what that's all about. So they, if they have that case, the tenant is allowed to have access to their full file. So I'm just kind of picturing that and thinking, yeah, I, I don't really want that tenant seeing all my lease violations that I sent to their caseworker. All the emails that I sent to their caseworker and everything, is that in that file? I don't really like that idea. But the things that they want us to send to them, besides just the seven day notices, and I do recommend that we do send those. For In Michigan, it's a seven day notice of eviction. I think we should send those to Section 8 and say, look, the person's paying late. It's a good motivator to get them paying on time. Um, but what they want, the big, the, there's lease violations Section 8 doesn't care about. Like um, dirt, like let's say they're just really bad at housekeeping and their stove is full, so full of grease that they could start a fire. This happens a lot for me in Detroit where we'll go into the house and be like, wow, that's a lot of grease stuck on that stove. Or um, that they keep breaking their mini blinds over and over. Or that they got an extra dog. Section 8 doesn't really care about that stuff. And the reason I know that they don't care, and this is a rant, all right? Their inspectors will come out and give me all these violations saying this, this, and this. And some of them are fair. Like, let's say like a, a missing smoke detector batteries and we missed it. We didn't get it in there before they came for the inspection. Okay, that's fair. I want them to have good smoke detectors. But they also will have the tenant cause damages. 
and the tenant that we left in there for eight years never cleaned her shower and they put on it every year that she um, that there was all this mold in there but she wasn't required to clean it and if we wanted it to pass the inspection and keep getting money we had to clean it every year my husband cleaned a shower for this family so I know that they don't care about filth. I wish that they did. I wish they had some kind of a grading system that people don't know how to keep house or something. <sighs> Can you just see all the trouble that would cause? How do you, how do you regulate that? So I know they don't care about that, but they do have a list of things that are extremely important and they could lose their voucher over one of them. Well, the easy one is they didn't turn in their paperwork. That one happens that's a pretty easy one to get out of the tenant then pulls it together and then they don't lose their voucher the other one is extra bodies in the house so you could get them out of section eight that way and that way get them out of your house if you if your maintenance guy took a bill of took a picture a photograph of some mail that was made clearly to somebody that doesn't that, that is not on the lease you could do something like that or taking pictures of the different bedrooms and how many beds are in that house. That's an option that you could do. But the ones that kind of get me, <laughs> that I'm not helping you with this, Section 8, I'm sorry, but they will immediately get rid of somebody off of Section 8, which means out of your house, if they have been convicted of meth. Okay, I'm not in the business of messing with anybody's drug deals. I am not going about messing with that. I mean, so if I sent Section 8 a letter saying, hey, I think they're doing meth. Sure looks like a meth lab, here's a picture. I don't want that coming up in their hearing that I'm the one that sent the picture that made them go to jail or something. I'm not dealing with that. And they also have like drug use. Good luck with that with all the marijuana being legal right now. Like what other drug use? But the drug use has to affect the quiet enjoyment of say the neighbors or the people in the apartment complex. So. That's another tough one, and I just don't want to get in the way of, I shouldn't say it, but I don't want to get in the way of anybody's drug use. I'm not in that business. I'm in the business of being a housing provider, violent criminals. So yeah, you can't have violent criminals on Section 8, but I rented a house once. I'm pretty sure I made the video. I'll look for it. I'll put it right here about Ferlita the felon. She came to see my house. She was a convicted felon. And I'm like, how, how is it that you have Section 8? She's like, well, they don't always check. They check when you come in. So Section 8 would like for us to let them know if there's a convicted felon. I guess maybe I would feel comfortable with that. Maybe if they're already in jail. I guess I better. In that case, I better. I hear a fish. I hear a fish. Another one is domestic abuse, sexual assault, and stalking. So that one, we had it where a Section 8 tenant had a boyfriend that she didn't want him in her house. He wasn't on the lease, but I wasn't going to go mess with this guy. He was a bad dude. But he would imprint her body into the plaster, and then he took our, our, our windows right out of the house to get in to get her, probably to imprint them on the plaster. And the neighbor said he drove through our garage door. Thankfully, she just moved. That was a dicey one, but had I brought Section 8 in on that, they are supposed to protect the person who is the victim. They're not really here to protect us with our property in a situation like that. Not that I know what they would have done. Maybe I should have given them a chance to see what they would have done with that one. Uh, we just kind of stuck it out and went and did the repairs because she had been a tenant with us for a long time and it was my own house. so. Sometimes when it's your own house, you don't make the best financial decisions. But, but when I manage other people's houses, I have to be right by the books. Another thing that when Section 8 is deciding if they're going to remove someone from the voucher, they do take into consideration the entire family. So if it affects the children, if there's somebody with a disability that needs reasonable accommodations, if there's somebody elderly, uh, it's really a lot harder for them to say, yep, you're off the program, and they know that that is going to affect them and their kids being, you know, living on the street. So they make some decisions based on that. And if the tenant doesn't like the decision that Section 8 made uh, by, re by removing them off the program, they're allowed to go to circuit court and then circuit court can force that Section 8 office to pay uh, for damages. So I have to think that that is in their decision making as well. So it's not as easy as you think to get someone off Section 8. It's not that easy to get them out of your house, 
I'd like to say we get all this great support from the Section 8 offices. I think sometimes they try, but I think that they are actually very, very limited. So if you are interested in any kind of consulting about Section 8, you have situations going on. I have a lot of experience as a landlord from working with them. Be sure you uh, check in my info below to get information on our consulting. We also do consulting in Detroit for people that are doing different renovation projects. If you need some boots on the ground to go check out something in Detroit, you've got a crew working on something, uh, let us know. Maybe we can help you out here. And of course, we sell our houses that have tenants in them and they are collecting rent. And if you wanna buy a house in Detroit, I have all kinds of information right here about Detroit. And I've got a renovation project we're working on right now that's kind of a fun story I'm in the middle of. If you wanna check that one out, here's our latest renovation that we did right here. And of course, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. And comment below, be nice to me, all right?